Hello everybody, it is time for another video game review of a recent video game release. Just a couple of weeks ago, we got a new Star Wars game. We got a very anticipated and very much hyped AAA release of a sequel to a game from several years ago, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I got the game at launch, I started playing it within a couple hours of it coming out, and over the last couple weeks, I played all the way through it, I beat it last night. And now here I am reviewing it. I didn't get to go through it as quickly as I would have liked. I didn't get to play it as much as I would have liked initially because of the draft. I just had to dedicate myself to the draft for a few days there. And there was a limited opportunity for me to play it on those initial few days. So I was hoping to be able to get through it a little faster than I did. But regardless, the game, it's not even two weeks old. So the interest level in how people feel about this game is still relatively high. So let's go ahead and talk about this game for a little bit here. There are many different angles to cover with Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And let's start with some of the more peripheral stuff, the stuff that I know is not necessarily the most important stuff when it comes to a game like this, but is going to be of interest to some people because of the first game. Um, the first game did a really good job of coming up with a somewhat innovative style of play that fit really well within the Star Wars universe. Obviously, Jedi Fallen Order was a new IP. It was a Star Wars game, but it was a brand new franchise, and it managed to present its multiple aspects really well. And this game does do that. This game does a really good job of combining... Uh, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Elden Ring style combat with Star Wars and then adding in Uncharted slash Tomb Raider style environmental puzzles. And I can say that this franchise has that whole thing figured out pretty well. So that stuff is all on lockdown. The general aspect of the gameplay is solid. Um, the story is really good. And one thing I'll say about Jedi Survivor... I'm not going to spoil the story, but I will say this for Jedi Survivor. Unlike Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor has a really good ending. Jedi Survivor's ending is great. And by the way, sorry about my hair doing the uh, symbiote thing, whatever. Can't do nothing about it. But um, yeah, the ending of Jedi Survivor is great. Unlike the ending of Fallen Order, which I thought was like very kind of anticlimactic and rushed, the ending to this game is really really good it climaxes just the way you want it to it ends on a really powerful note and i think that it really helps make up for some of the shortcomings of the ending of fallen order and i know they're planning on making at least one more game in this franchise if they can have an ending like that to the third game i think it's going to be a really really strong trilogy uh the characters are good a lot of the characters are the same characters from uh, Fallen Order. They're back. There are some new ones as well. They're presented well. They're characterized well. Uh, the dialogue is good. That's something that stood out about the um, original game. And it stands out here as well. So those things are quite good. Those things are quite strong. The graphics of the game are really good. The environments of the game mostly look really good. We'll talk about that in a second. So... In terms of the basic peripherals of this game, it's really good. So there are a couple of things that need to be said here. First of all, I want to talk a little bit more about the micro elements of the gameplay. I want to talk a little bit more about the um, little nuances to the gameplay here because obviously this game is going to get compared to Fallen Order. Uh, Fallen Order is the only other game in this franchise, so people are going to compare it to that. I will say this. In terms of the gameplay, in terms of the way the combat works, in terms of the way your force powers work, lightsaber combat works, uh, the, the environmental navigating works, the puzzles work, it doesn't really feel different from Fallen Order. It's hard for me to say if this game really improved on Fallen Order. And honestly... I think it feels like more of the same. And honestly, I don't have a big problem with that. But if you're looking for a game that innovates and improves and builds massively on what they did in the first game, I don't really think you're going to find that here with Jedi Survivor. 
So I will admit it is more of the same, and I'm okay with that. I can live with that. That's fine. But one thing that I do think needs to be said here with the um, uh, <clears throat> uh, Jedi Fallen Order, I'm sorry, Jedi Survivor, is that there are some areas where I feel like there was a little bit of a step back. And I'm not talking about the performance issues yet. I'm going to save that for the end. It's not just the performance issues. If it was just the performance issues, then that would be something that would probably get fixed in a couple of, uh, probably get fixed in a couple of months and a half a year from now, nobody's going to even remember the game had performance issues at launch. But for one, you have the cadence of the main storyline. Not the story itself, but the cadence of you playing through it. Most of the game, you are bouncing back and forth between four different worlds. I think there are three planets and then a moon. You're bouncing back and forth between these four places constantly. And then at the end of the game, two more locations open up. Um, the, I, uh, the Obviously, the last location you go to, and then you have a, an Imperial base right before that that you do, and those open up right at the end. So most of the game, you feel like you're bouncing back and forth between four locations. And I could have sworn that there were more locations, more worlds you could go to in Fallen Order. So even though this game came out, what, five years after Fallen Order? Even though this game came out five years later and presumably had the opportunity to do the first game bigger, better, and more, I think there are fewer worlds in this game. And it feels like to make up for it, they just made you have to go back to the same worlds over and over and over again to achieve ob objectives and do stuff in the main storyline. So it kind of feels like that was a way for them to cut costs a little bit and, and trim out the amount of work they needed to do and basically make the game feel a little bigger than it is. And there was definitely a point in this game where I became aware of the fact that they just kind of keep sending me back and forth between these four worlds over and over and over again. And I kind of wish I was going to new worlds that look different. Like the uh, first game had the jungle planet. It had the... Uh, you, you obviously ended the game on... Uh, I, believe, I, I think you ended up the ended the game on Mustafar. Not 100% sure if it was. There was the underwater um, planet that you were on. There were the uh, city planets that you were on. It felt like you were constantly going to new places and discovering new environments. In this game, it, it almost felt like the um, desert planet, uh, I think it was called Kobo, was like a hub world that you kept having to come back to to do stuff. And then you would just bounce back and forth between the other three planets, depending on whatever objective um, you needed to. Now, that is kind of whatever, but they're taking a little bit of a step back from the first game, in my view. And I think that is a little bit disappointing because I feel like if they had more time and they had you know, more resources, they probably would have said, okay, let's do eight planets you can go to, not just four. And then we'll have two more at the very end, so ten in total instead of six. <clears throat> so on that level, I think that the game took a little bit of a step back. And there were a couple of little issues that I had, like, just as an example, a game like this is heavy on presentation. A game like this is very heavy on being presented well. So when the game cuts from gameplay to a cutscene, I, I think that transition needs to be really smooth, like you see in Uncharted, as an example. Sometimes in this game, it's not. Sometimes in this game, it smashes from gameplay to a cutscene, and it's supposed to be smooth, but it's not even remotely smooth. And it feels like that is something they could have ironed out if it spent a few more weeks being developed, but they just kind of pushed it out there because they wanted it out for May the 4th. And boy, there's a lot of that going on with this game. So little things like that, stuff that doesn't really bother me, um, I did run into a couple of crashers. I did have the game freeze up on me a couple times. There was this one time where I actually went to a place where there was supposed to be a boss, and the boss didn't show up, so I was literally stuck there. I spent probably like 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get out, and I couldn't, because the only way out was to beat the boss, and the boss literally didn't spawn. So I was just stuck sitting there until I realized that was the case, and I just had to restart and do the section over again. So there are little bugs like that I can... I can certainly uh, live with that, but there's a much bigger problem here. All that stuff, I would be willing to forgive if not for this. 
I thought Fallen Order was a great game. In fact, I think that Jedi Fallen Order is tied for Knights of the Old Republic 2 for the best Star Wars game. I think that Fallen Order and KOTAR 2 are the best Star Wars games, and I gave both games a 9 out of 10. I think this game, even with the issues that I just mentioned, would be a 9 out of 10 if not for the performance. And there's not much getting around this one, guys. I play the game on PC, and I understand that the PC experience is going to be... It's often worse anyway. But my understanding is the game doesn't run very well on Xbox, and I have heard it's a little better on PS5, but it still doesn't run as good as it should. Um, this is current year, after all. We should be seeing games running at um, 60 frames pretty steadily here. Um, and as for a PC port not running well, I just got done playing the Resident Evil 4 Remake. That game runs brilliantly on my PC, no problems whatsoever, and it's also a beautiful game, incredible graphics, so I'm definitely annoyed by the fact that they pushed out a game that just doesn't perform very well, and I know they released a patch, but for me the patch didn't really do that much, and I've seen other streamers play this game on console and not really have much better luck. Um, the game mostly runs steady at around 40 FPS, which is okay, that's fine. But during se sequences of significant action, I had dips down to 25. Um, whenever I was on the uh, world map on board the Mantis, it would dip to like 15 for some reason. They, my computer hated being on the map screen, and I don't know why. The one where you pick the planet. Um... There was this one sequence in this game where there was a lot going on on screen and I was getting down to like 15 and it was a combat part. And in a game like this, it's not just about looking at pretty lights and colors. No, performance issues like that are a huge problem in a game like this that requires precision inputs and reactive inputs as well. You need to be reacting to what your enemies do. You have to react in a split second and you're losing frames, and you can't see what's going on. It leads to dropped inputs, leads to making mistakes, leads to unnecessary deaths that are not the fault of the player. I didn't have a huge problem with this personally. There was no part in this game where I got stuck for an extended period of time, but I did have a few deaths that I felt like were caused by the performance issues. So, to me, I look at that, and I have to conclude that, hey, there was some meat left on the bone with this game. If they had made a game that runs as smoothly as a game like Elden Ring or Dark Souls or Sekiro, stuff like that, then I think they would have made a great game. As it stands, I think they made a good game. I do think it is a significant step down from Fallen Order just because of the performance. Um, not to say that that's the only thing holding it back from being considered about as good for me as uh, Fallen Order. Um, that I do think that there were more memorable bosses in uh, Fallen Order. I do think that going through the uh, the sisters in Fallen Order was a little more engaging than what they did in this game. Although, by the end of the game, they did kind of bring me around on what they were doing in this one. Um, I do feel like the story and the narrative and the environments of the first game were probably a little bit better. But at the same time, this game does add a couple of new force powers. This game does add some new lightsaber stances. Um, it does do some things that are better, and overall, I probably would have been able to say they more or less equal themselves out, but the game not running well is really not okay, and it's a real problem when you're trying to do precise inputs. Like, this game, I didn't find this game to be nearly as hard as Fallen Order, and I don't think it's nearly as hard as a FromSoft game. Like, there might have been a few bosses that I died to more than five times, and there were no bosses that I died to more than 10 times. Like, like <clears throat> the hardest boss in this game for me was, I'm not going to say who it was, but I may have died to them like six or seven times before I got them, which in a game like this is nothing. I don't really care about dying six or seven times in a game that plays like this. But I do feel like some of the levels were a little harder than they needed to be because of frame drops. And because of that, I have to dock the game significantly. It really does hamper the experience significantly in my book. And I really hope that when they make their next game, I know they're going to make another Jedi uh, game in probably like four or five years, I hope the initial performance is better because this is a franchise that has tremendous potential. 
So, like I said, I gave Jedi Fallen Order a 9 out of 10. To me, this is like an 8.3 out of 10. It is good. It is good, but I don't think it comes very... I don't think it's quite very good. I mean, just to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about here, when I played Fallen Order, I did pretty much all the side content because I was having so much fun with the game. I thought it was a great game. This game, I did very little side content. I did very little of the side stuff in this game because, well, unfortunately, I kind of wanted to get the game over with because I was annoyed with the performance issues. I didn't want to spend a lot... I didn't want to do super hard optional bosses. Like, I know the spawn of Ogdo is in this game, but I don't want to try to fight bosses like that when the performance issues are going to lead to deaths that I shouldn't have. I don't want to fight these super hard optional bosses with bad performance. It's just going to add another layer of frustration that I don't need. So, I did leave a lot... There's... I left a lot of meat on the bone in this game, I will admit. Very few of the rumors, very few of the side missions. I didn't do a lot of that stuff. I left a lot of stuff undone in this game, admittedly. And if I had done the side stuff, I would have gotten more time out of it. I probably would have ended up logging like 40 or 50 hours in this game. I may have liked it more. I may have at least been able to give it more credit. But the reason why I didn't do that was because the game doesn't run well and it was starting to annoy me with all the frame drops. And the problem is the frame drops frequently happen during action scenes, and that's a big problem. So take it for what you will. Take it for what you will. If you do the side content, you may end up liking the game more than I did, but I still like the game. It's still good. I'm not taking anything away from that. Um, the puzzles are really good. The combat is still as good as it was in the first game. It's like a slightly simplified version of a FromSoft game. And I like it a lot. I think it works really well. I think it meshes together really well with the other styles of games. They're um, style of games they're kind of uh, copying, and I thought the game was good. Unfortunately, it's a really, really unnecessary reason why I think the game falls short of greatness. So, I do think that they can do better, and I do think that you might be better served waiting a couple months to play this game if you're playing it on PC. Because there will probably be a patch that improves the game's performance at some point. Alright, so that's my thoughts on Star Wars Jedi Survivor. It's a good game. I had a good time with it. I don't regret getting it at launch. Because I still ended up having fun with it. But I feel like there is a disappointing amount of what if there because of the performance issues. And I know... I am not the only one who had the performance issues, so it's not like I was playing it on a bad PC. It's not like I was playing it on a machine that couldn't run it. I think it is a problem with the, uh, I think it's a problem with the game. And I've seen many, many streamers complain about the same thing. And I guess the last thing I should talk about when it comes to this game is, why did the reviewers miss the performance issues? Because the reviewers, the official reviewers, missed on this one. They all gave the game really good scores and did not mention the performance issues at all. And it would be one thing to say, oh, they must have all played it on console, but the console versions initially, pre-patch, had issues. I know it's a little better now, but I don't know what caused that. that that's really kind of uh, alarming to me because the reviewers had no problem catching the horrific performance in uh, Redfall, the terrible unfinished AI the unengaging gameplay of Redfall, they caught that no problem. But this game feels like it kind of got a pass. And I waited until I saw some initial reviews before I pre-ordered the game just to make sure I wasn't getting a turd. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit disappointed in the way the reviews handled this game because I feel like they just completely passed on acknowledging the big elephant in the room there. But yeah, good game, pretty good effort by EA, I wish it. I wish my experience with it was as good as it was with Fallen Order, and I think it would have been if the game ran better. I really do. So I will acknowledge the fact that if you wait, or you play it on a system that'll run it better, like a console, it seems like the PS5 in particular runs it the best, you'll probably have a slightly better time with it than I did. All right, I will see you guys later. That's another video game review. My next one will be for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which I plan on starting in less than a week when it launches. Hope to see you guys then. Thanks for watching, and those are my thoughts on Jedi Survivor.